Hey, y'all, on today's podcast, we celebrate Paul's 100th member. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Flipped Lifestyle Podcast. Super excited to be back with you again today because we have an amazing success story that we are going to celebrate on the Flipped Lifestyle Podcast today. We have got a member who has crossed the 100 member milestone in their own online membership. Our guest today is longtime Flip Your Life community member, Paul Clifford. Paul, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, glad to be here. I am super glad to be here because you sent me a message last week that made me jump for joy, cry a little tear, and just like celebrate and and be super happy. So tell everybody why you're here today, Paul. What are we celebrating with you today? Well, I think we're celebrating that I have a hundred paying members to my community. Oh my gosh. That is the magic number, baby. Because all you need is a hundred people to pay you every month to make a living for your family. Which doesn't mean we don't want more. It doesn't mean we want more. But But, man, there's something about, there's something special about getting that uh, 100 members. So, And and y'all think he's joking when he says he cries. He he really No, I really do. I cry. (laughs) I seriously cry. Every every time somebody has a success story that sends it in and then something big happens for them, I just like, I I just break down like emotionally, but uh, I, but let, let, let's we're going to get into the whole story because your story is fascinating, and you are the you are the king of persistence, my friend. You've been crushing this for a while now and uh, clawing and scraping ahead to get to that one hundred member mark. But uh, tell everybody about you. Uh, tell them about your background, where you're from, and tell them a little bit about what you do do uh, in your membership. Yeah, so um, I do online church tech training, uh, specifically ProPresenter, but as we're recording this, we're still in the quarantine lockdown, and you might know that churches aren't allowed to meet. Well, another thing I do is live streaming, so that's at least been part of it, that uh, a lot of churches have been like, uh, we were afraid of technology last week, and now we have no choice. Oh, no. That's amazing. Yeah, that's why you've been getting like a surge of members lately, right? It's yeah. true. And I think this is going to affect all different aspects of our lives. You know, I think it's going to affect businesses because they're having they're being forced to think of things differently. It's affecting churches because they're being forced to think of things differently. So I think there's going to be a lot of exciting things to come out of something that is a really negative thing. But there's there are going to be some positives that come out of it. So so you teach people this software called Pro Presenter, right? And this mm-hmm. is like the industry standard. Um, in churches, but tell everybody a little bit about what Pro Presenter is and like what it does, because I don't know if people would have heard of that outside of that space, you know? Yeah. So imagine PowerPoint, only all the things that annoy you about PowerPoint don't exist. So Pro Presenter, well, so a Volkswagen Beetle is a car, so is a Ferrari, but they're totally different. Uh, PowerPoint is like a Volkswagen Beetle. It will get you from point A to point B, but ProPresenter does it so much better. It does it with style, um, and it's so well created that there are secular organizations that are using it, like the U.S. House of Representatives, for example. Yeah, like it's 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 big. It, it, it's an amazing piece of software, but I will attest to this. Like they've, uh, Joss and I volunteer at our uh, kids at our church in the children's service, right? And our church has like, um, it's almost like a little mini sanctuary for the kids' church. You know what I'm saying? So the kids go upstairs, and mm-hmm. uh, we stay downstairs. But when we volunteer up there, um, one of the things that sometimes I will help do, and uh, usually there's a kid running. This yeah, thing. almost always there are yeah, kids running because they're, because like none of the adults can figure it out, <laughs> right? And they're sitting there, they got their screens up. The kids will run this pro presenter, and uh, it it's very intimidating when you first look at it because it's not laid out like you're used to, like like with PowerPoint or Google Slides or something like that. And you actually uh, do a lot of sound and tech work, right? Like actually mm-hmm. going to events and do stuff like that. So that's yeah. how you use this software, and now you've just started teaching it to other organizations, correct? Yeah, so I've been volunteering at my church since 2000, and probably, I don't know, uh, 2007, we switched to uh, ProPresenter, and I was the guy that was in charge of our satellite campus. So I'd go in every morning, set everything up, um, and go from there. And I thought it was just this easy software Anyone could figure out how to do it in like five minutes, 
but I kept getting questions from people that couldn't figure it out. And I guess mm -hmm. it's just that I think the same way that the programmer does or something. Yeah. So, so you figured it out and that's always the sign that you should start teaching something online is when people in real life start asking you questions because you are now being perceived by your circle as the expert in that topic. And if there are people locally asking you questions, there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of people online typing in those same questions. So anybody listening to this podcast, that is a great example of when you should think, hey, maybe I should teach this uh, online. So let, okay, go ahead, Jessica. Yeah. And I feel like, um, you know, things that come so simply to really anybody, there are a lot of other people that it does not come simply to, um, you know, technology is something that comes pretty simple to me because that's just the way that my brain works. Um, I'm a very logical person, computer technology stuff is very logical. So it just clicks with me really well. And so everywhere that I've ever been, like when I worked at school, I was always the building's technology person by default, you know, <laughs> like I just always got nominated to that position. And, you know, to me, it's like so simple, but then to other people, they're like, wow, you're a wizard or something. Yeah. You know? And what's amazing too is when you, when you have mastery over a topic, like Paul, you have all this, uh, these unfair advantages of working with different tech and different sounds and different audio and different videos, something like that becomes like much simpler. I think that's why we actually were able to maybe put a few of the pieces together early in our online journey too, Paul, because like Jocelyn was good at tech, right? Nerd alert. I, and she's a nerd. And I actually ha had written some HTML in the past. I decided back in like 2003, I wanted to learn how to write HTML code for, you know, like a month because, I change interest really fast. Yeah. That happens. And like, so I, I kind of knew that. And then I had worked with a lot of audio and video too in football because we have to edit highlights and like I would edit videos to show the clips to the kids and I would do the highlight video every year and we would put sound on it. And, you know, so it's funny how those unfair advantages just from our God given experiences stack up as we're, as we're starting to get into these wor online world. And like, you can realize like, that's what gives you the advantage. So Paul, tell me a little bit about when you started your online journey. Now, what year did you actually start uh, building a website or like, when did you discover like the flip lifestyle podcast? And when did you decide, Hey, you know, I think I might want to do this and kind of jump into the community. Yeah. So I started um, working for myself in 2011, February of 2011. And I had no idea what I was doing. I, I just was like, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try this. And so uh, for a while I had a freelance gig. Uh, there's a race horse race course here in Lexington, which is I'm right outside of uh, called Keeneland. And they monitor the horses during the race in real time. And my job two months a year was to press the right buttons on the computer so that that would happen. And so I did that and that was helpful, but that was only two of 12 months a year that I had money. So you kind of got to work more months than two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you need yeah, to stay so. warm, dry and fed all year long, not just for two months. Yeah, so I was like, you know, whatever I could do to make it until I could discover what I was supposed to do, you know. So I, uh, I started with, uh, I've been podcasting on and off since 2005. So there's a podcast consultant named Dave Jackson who's in Ohio. So I was listening to him one day, and he was saying that there was this really great guy named Pat Flynn. It was like a business dude. So I listened to his podcast and I'm like, well, yeah, he seems pretty cool. Seems pretty family focused. He's not as um, with the F bombs as Gary V. So, you know, I could listen to him. <laughs> right. And, and then one day there was this couple that was on from Kentucky. And I thought, well, Kentucky, I'm from Kentucky. And I listened and, you know, one was a librarian. And I thought, you know, my kid's school their librarian just left. Maybe it's the same. It wasn't, but that's the kind of thoughts I had. And so uh, you guys had a uh, lead magnet that was like uh, how to make an ebook with PowerPoint or something like that. So I downloaded that and I started listening to the Flip Lifestyle podcast uh, pretty early on. Uh, in fact, I think 
I'm a, I'm a little behind, but other than that, I think I've heard every single episode. That's amazing. So when you launch the course, I'm like, oh, if only I had more money, I could join the course. But then you, not long thereafter, you switch to a membership, and I'm like, I can afford that money for the membership. The course was outside but the the membership i think i could do and so that's how i got hooked up with you guys oh that's amazing See, I, I, yeah you have been around a while you've been around a while yeah. like i mean because <laughs> like if you heard us launch the course that was probably in 2000 that was like 14 14, or yeah. something like that and you mm-hmm. know the original course we hadn't had it. We hadn't created it yet. We just made an outline of what we thought it should look like. We're like, uh, a few people are here. A few people are listening. Let's, Let's just do it. throw it out there. Right? And see so what that, I think the original course was like $400. But the reason we did that is because we were going to spend all of our time for two months creating that course. So we wouldn't be able to work on anything else. And we really did. Like every single day, every like single we talked day. to those people. We asked them questions. What do you want? What, what questions do you have? You know, it was a very labor intensive thing. So we sold two or three beta groups. I can never remember. I'm going to have to go back and two. look. Maybe two. We sold two beta groups. And then we decided, wait a minute. We were school teachers. Like we couldn't have afforded $400 either when we first started out. So when we were school teachers, we couldn't have afforded $400 either, right? And we thought, wait, we can't keep charging $400 for this because our mission is to help real families who have bills and who have children to feed and who have gas that they have to put in their car to get to their jobs until they can quit their jobs. So that's why we said, hey, let's do a membership model. Let's make it a monthly cost. Let's split this out where people can go out and afford it and they can get the education they need. And then we just put all the courses in there, all the forums in there, all the member calls in one place um, so that people could like go out and do this. Because, man, when we were looking back in like 2012 when we started, every course you had to buy was like $1,000, $500. And like we were selling everything and we ran out of stuff to sell. Uh, to learn how to do this. And we're like, that that can't be the path. You know, that's why we went to the membership model. And so you jumped in with us when we started the recurring uh, model, which I believe was in 15. And what were you doing at that time? Well, so I had some courses. Um, I had, I had some books. Um, I did NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Month only. I, I did nonfiction. Uh, back in 2010. So I had that that I thought when I launched, oh, I'm going to sell a bunch of books, but not so much. Um, So I had all these kind of a few dollars here, a few dollars there, a few freelance opportunities here, a few over there, uh, an introductory course to ProPresenter and all this stuff. And just it wasn't making a living really. So, all right. So uh, this is the general path that people follow when they come into the Flip Your Life community. You take, you either take what you've got or you create uh, something new and you create a content area. You curate a blueprint or a path for people to follow with your content, right? You build some kind of community around it, Facebook group, member calls, whatever it is. And then you become and position yourself as the leader and you lead people through this process over months, right? And, And help them. Uh, get to the next level. So you start building out what would become your online business, your membership or whatever. Do you remember when you sold your first membership? Do you remember that? I think it was 2016. 2016. Like, uh, yeah. So it's 2020 now. So like four years ago and, you know, I was really excited. It was a yearly membership that I sold for $97. Hey man, first okay. you got to sell one. If you can find it's, one, you can find a hundred and one or a thousand and one. Right? It's true. It's true. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I can remember many times, like inside the community, we would have like very lengthy discussions about this and that, and what should you offer, and what should it look like, and why isn't this working? And um, I, I just seem to remember having those like recurring conversations. Jocelyn calls them talk people off the ledge <laughs> conversations. Hey, where I have it's them, like, like every this day. isn't working. Why is why I sold one? Where the other hundred and one that Shane always talks about, right? Right, right. Well, I mean, I even had those thoughts as recently as the Flip Your Life event. So I didn't talk about my, 2019, right? Back yeah, yeah. So September 2019, it's as we're recording, it's April 2020. So not that long ago, 
I had 25 members that I'd gotten to over the previous three, three and a half years. So I'd gotten to 25 and I started to think maybe there aren't any more people out there these are all the churches that use this software in the whole (laughs) world like like getting 25 people over three and a half years paul is literally the definition of brick by brick but not just brick by brick you're like going out and carving your own bricks and baking them in the sun each brick one by one and i can see why that could be that is frustrating and and we've seen this happen many times where people like man it's just not working Man, it's just not working. But then, but like, we know that they have something. We know that there's something special in them, and if they can just tap into the right thing, like Mm -hmm. they can make it work. Yeah, and like getting so, so you're at 25. You're at the Flip Your Life Live event in Lexington in 2019. Mm -hmm. That was in September. It was in September, Um, and I'm I'm still a little bit upset because Paul doesn't like my country music. That's right. Um, I I still haven't forgotten. We got some problems here, but like (laughs) trouble (laughs) paradise. Hair. Trouble. Rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll, rock baby. Rock and roll hair. Paul is a rocker, that is for sure. All right. So like what what so what was the tipping point? What happened after Flip Your Life Live that literally poured gasoline on this little fire? I mean, you 4 x your membership in just a few months. Well, so and also talk what about that? what what happened when you were there. Like, was there something in particular that really just sort of lit a spark for you or like people that you met? Like, tell us a little bit about the actual event and then after. Well, I do remember that we had a session where uh, we were supposed to go meet in groups and discuss our stuff. And, you know, I'm in this group with three or four other people and we're down in the lobby of the hotel And I'm right by the restaurant and I'm just discussing stuff with uh, some of the people that are there. And I'm like, I only have 25 members. I don't get this. Why is it? I keep hearing it like it felt like I was in the middle. There was a contingent of people that were just starting and they had a lot of hope. And then there was another contingent of people that had over 100 members, some 200, 500 members. Um, I actually helped out with the AV the next week of a Flip Your Life member who had enough members to fill up that hotel just in her niche. So I'm just like, why am I stuck in the middle? Have I chosen poorly? Do I not know what I'm doing? And uh, one of the people said, I think you've got everything ready. It's just ready to go. There's some like piece that needs to push you over, like something that you need to get that you don't have yet. And I thought, surely there is. And so then, uh, as part of it, uh, Shane offered a special price for what was then called Prolific Monthly, which is now called membership master look at that he's holding up the <laughs> copy baby he's got the last month's edition in that's hand. right that's awesome so like every day i look at this thing and uh shane says do that like the first month i did like a couple of things and i i stayed above churn and so i'm like oh i i got two members but i lost two members well that's better than going down which is probably what i would have done and then the second month i did more of the things that shane uh said so october i did a couple of things stayed above churn november we had the black friday and i did everything that shane did and i think i got to like 35 members and i'm like Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's, big. That's big time. That's like 50% growth almost. You know what I mean? You know, and I'm like, then I thought, what would I have done without Shane's input? And I said, okay, so like Thanksgiving, I would have sent out an email and I would have gotten one or two sales and I would have been pretty happy with one or two sales. But, you know, I was at my in-laws for Thanksgiving, you know, and I'm sending out the emails. I'm just, I turned my brain off. People are like, what are you doing? Like it's Thanksgiving. Why are you writing emails? (laughs) Well, um, I love my in-laws, but sometimes I need a little time away, you know? So like, uh, when, my father-in-law gets on one of his rants. I just excuse myself and, and I'd write an email just to calm down. And then 
you know, I'd send out the email and then I'd run back up because my wife's childhood home is in the basement. They've got uh, like a split level house. So, and the family room's up right by the kitchen on the top floor. So I'd run back up to the second floor and go, I just sold another one, you know, and everyone seems happy. And my father-in-law was uh, distracted from his rant. So it was a win-win for everyone. (laughs) And uh, so then I'd be like, I need to do more of this. Yeah. And so let's, uh, for the benefit of other people, let's kind of explain what Membership Masters is. Okay. okay. So, uh, So basically when people launch their membership, right, they... They, they go from this building stage of creating the foundations and the fundamentals and the courses and the community and the, all the all the infrastructure that you have to have in place. In other words, what you had when you got to the event. Exactly. Like that's that's what it's for. It, like that's what the Flip Your Life community is for is to help you start building, grow your membership, right? Get those first couple of members. But then the, the problem, what people run into is, well, wait a minute. How do I get noticed? How do I get attention? How add do I fuel get to the fire? How do I add fuel to the fire? And that's where marketing comes in, right? But marketing is hard. Copywriting is hard. And 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 there's so many variables at play and so many things you could do, it can become very overwhelming. So the biggest question that we would get immediately when anyone would be like, there's my membership, is okay, what do I do next? If I just had somebody that would tell me what to do every single day to get and keep more members, this thing could blow up. I mean, if I got one member a day for 100 days, that'd be a member, right? Mm -hmm. Our membership. So we started Membership Masters. It's actually a calendar that tells you what to do every day. And it's literally a paper membership. newsletter. It's a paper like, newsletter. We mail it to your door. Your mail. Yep. And the reason that I do that, the reason we chose to deliver this specific thing by paper is because like, just like Paul just held it up on camera. If you're watching this on YouTube, he's got two issues in his hand now. They're multiplying like gremlins. <laughs> he got it wet. The uh, like whenever, whenever you have something physical in your hand, staring you in the face, right? You can't ignore it. And like, if you've engaged with it and you've took a note on it and you've highlighted it and it's laying beside your computer while you're setting up the promotion, it's like I'm sitting right beside you looking over your shoulder saying, Paul, do this on Monday, do this on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, you're going to get and keep more members. And y'all, it's real easy to download your PDF and, and put it in the box. And, and, oh, I'll look at that later. Right. Oh, you're not looking or at like that how, later. How many courses have you bought that are you've never even logged into. You never even watched them. I'm guilty of this. I I've, have like three or four right now. I bought one. I bought a Frank Kern sent an email out, and I just hide my wallet every time that guy sends me an email. But I bought his course, and I've not even looked at it yet. I haven't even logged into it. I haven't even opened the emails to deliver it. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch that later. I want to get that now. But like, you can't do that with that with that newsletter because, and it's like Christmas. You know, you get a you get a present every single month from Shane. It's just like, like in the in the mailbox. So like. So that's that's what membership masters is, and what Paul's saying is that you know there's usually four promotions a month, give or take, inside of membership masters, I, and they're all time specific. They're all relevant to the exact month that's going on, and you know so it's really relevant in your audience's mind. So the first month he's like, yeah, I'll try this one. Whoa. The second month he's like, wait a minute, I'll try a couple more. Whoa. Black Friday dropped the 35 members. Let's go. And then all of a sudden he starts saying, maybe I should read this every day. And the cool <laughs> thing is like, it tells you what to do every single day. Like you get up and you do the thing. Like you don't have to think mm-hmm. you open it up to the calendar. You do what it says to do. Yep. And uh, every month I also put in an article to improve your membership sales funnel. That's one thing that me and Jocelyn are really good at is building million dollar membership funnels because we've seen hundreds of different funnels and we know what works and what doesn't work. And then we also focus on retention too. Jocelyn puts in retention tips because keeping members is just as important as, right. as getting them. So, so tell me what happened. Right, so Black Friday hits, we go mm-hmm. into the new year, we go into 2020 and right. you're like, I'm all in, I'm using this thing every day. So tell me what happens, how in three months you just exploded well, 70% and, up to a hundred people. And one of the things that we did at the event is we set a goal for the end of the year. So what was your goal? Yeah. So my goal was to hit 50 members by January 1st. And this isn't a fake out. I might do one of those later, but I actually didn't get to 50 members. I was like in the upper 40s. So still, that's a lot better than it was. It's almost double, not quite. So I I had some hope that 
I could do it. You know, it like was light at the end of the tunnel and it wasn't an oncoming train as old Dave right, says, right. right? So, you know, I thought, you know, if you aim for the stars and you land on the moon, you've still left the planet. So I, I was like, that, that, that's pretty cool. I don't know. This is something that helped me just very recently. Uh, it's not even something that you guys did, but this might help someone else. There are two kinds of people and I am the guess kind, and I'll define that. And then there's another kind that's the ask kind. One of my daughters is an ask person. And what that means is some people, if they want something, they'll just ask for it. And if you say no, you say no. There's another kind of person that's a guest person. They will guess if you're going to say yes. And if they think there's any possibility you say no, then they won't even bother to ask. But it could have been that you would have said yes, and they guessed wrong. So I think Shane is an ask kind of guy. You think? You think, dude? <laughs> and I think that's why you guys are so uh, successful is because Shane goes, hey, I'm going to see if anyone wants this. And Jocelyn's like, well, you're going to annoy everybody. And then you <laughs> ask and like a bunch of people buy it. And yeah. so and as I, a team, you're great like that. I have to say that I have come around to some of his ways and I think that he's come around to some of mine too. So I think that yeah. we're kind of better because of it. Yeah. We're like, yeah. What, what is, uh, it's like salt and pepper. What, is, what do you say? It's like yeah, salt and pepper. So like you're the salt, you're, you know, you put a lot of salt on put stuff, a lot of salt which is on not that. healthy. Oh, um, and then, maybe. you know, your pepper, you don't need as much, but you still need a little bit. That's right. Know? And like, if you put too much salt on it, it'll kill you and make it taste bad. So Jocelyn like keeps me from pouring the shaker too hard. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Right. And then she comes in and just dusts it off. and Everything's perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So, so what I, happens after the new year? So you're, you, you missed your goal just barely, but you feel that hope happening. Then right, what happens right. in January, February, and March? So January, I, it, it like, it just stayed solid. Like I did everything and it just stayed solid. But then I thought, I've heard that there are some times that there are seasons where it's it's like running through tar. It's just impossible to make any progress. But I didn't lose anybody. So had I not had all these new people come in, I, I'd be down like 10 or 15 members. So the fact that I'm staying even is pretty cool. And then just with some of this stuff in mind, Super Bowl happens at the beginning of February, and I'm like, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to send an email out that says, you know, for the week or two or three days after the Super Bowl, however many points the loser scores, that's your new membership uh, if you join. So I I did, and uh, I think it was 21 points the losers got i i'm not a big football guy sorry shane uh but i did watch the super bowl and all of a sudden i get like 10 new members and i'm like oh, yeah. oh so 21 dollars a month isn't a lot but i can still think of something to do with 210 dollars so i i did that and then i followed membership masters after that and it just yeah. it's spark, so it basically that that that's what I love to hear actually about membership masters is it's all it's like a ramp or a launching pad like and I and I tell people you don't have to do everything I do and you don't even have to do it exactly yeah, the same way but but it's like you can you can bend it to your niche and like it's there to spark ideas and to get you thinking and so you're not having that marketing writer's block where you're just sitting there like what do I do how do I get a member well here's a bunch of ideas it's almost like a conversation where you can start coming up with these new ideas yourself. And then you, when you're stuck, you go back into the newsletter, you do a promotion. And like, that's exactly how you're supposed uh, to use all of the information in membership and, masters. That's uh, a genius sale. By yeah. The way. I love what you did. Like you took something that was relevant for most people in your target market. And you said, Hey, I'm going to find something to talk about. It's February. I don't really have a lot to talk about right now. So guess what? The Super Bowl is coming up. Let me talk about that. And I love that. That's what marketing is. It's finding a way to reach people every day. And also too, like this, I, I know, I know how this story ends. So it's like, I can tell the future here in the story a little bit. I can feel the way you tell this, the momentum building, because it is addicting once you figure out that prolific promotion every day is what makes you a membership master. And like, that that's people what it aren't going to hate you for it. That's you right. may get one or two emails that say, I hate you, you're a scam artist. But for the most part, 
people are going to be really nice. They're going to mm-hmm. be really receptive. Yeah. We always say, the, the thing I tell Jocelyn every morning is how am I going to give us a raise today? I want to raise every day. And you can't do that with core sales. You can't do that with coaching. You can't do that with services, but you can do it with a membership. You can get a member every day. If you get a $50 member tomorrow, that's a $50 raise. If you get mm-hmm. 10 new members of $50, that's a $500 a month raise. You walk into your boss and say, hey, will you give me a $500 a month raise? They won't do it. But you can go out every day and market and promote and you can get a member every day. So that's I could, so tell me about the momentum in March and uh, all of that and how you got to 100 Yeah. So March starts building even more. I get into the eighties, you know, I'm starting to see it. Uh, My wife and I had a little bit of a disagreement because I'm an optimist. In fact, I'm like a crazy optimist. Like that's part of why I haven't given up because I just, I just know that it's going to work. Right. So I'm a crazy optimist in that way. And so we had this discussion and I had uh, like a, a sale where after I think last month it was the dollar trial. So I did a dollar trial. And then after the trial, it was uh, $50 a month, which is the full price. So it wasn't like a dollar trial to a discounted price. It was a dollar trial to uh, the full price. And so I got a few and then we're, she's like, well, yeah, some of those are going to cancel. And i like, Okay, negative Nelly. Maybe they are, but I've got more than I did before, and I don't think 100% of them are going to cancel. And then um, I did another thing where it was like a free trial to the thing, and that got me into the 90s. And I'm like, well, I'm going to approach this from her perspective. I sound like I'm brilliant, Art marriage counselor told me to approach it from her perspective. So I I said to her, well, some of them will probably cancel. And she's like, yeah, but you're doing good. Like, yeah. So then we get into the nineties and then uh, all this COVID-19 craziness hits and the new membership masters comes in and Shane says, Hey, you need to do like a crazy offer. One that people have no choice but to take. And so I did a two month trial and because I'm in the church niche, the sale was supposed to start like two days after Easter. But I'm like, look, I'm in the church niche. I I need to get these people some help for Easter. So I said, okay, I'm going to continue the two month free trial uh, after Easter up until like Tuesday or Wednesday of the next uh, week. but. If you were to pull the trigger early, I'm going to knock 10 bucks off per month for you. And some people were like, well, I will, I don't want to spend that $120 when I can get the exact same thing. So I got up to 97 members The uh, after all that was done before the two-month free trial ended. Yeah. And then... Shane sends me a message. How's it going? And that was on the day that it the trial ended. So I'm like, I got 98. Then I go to get some coffee or something. And I come back. I got 100 members. Ah! You know, and I was really excited. And I did what I would have never done before this because I would be been afraid that I was annoying people. So I sent out another email, same day, second email. I get like two or three more members. Then uh, with an hour left, I send out one final email. and I Three emails in one day. Three three emails emails in one day. day. And did everyone on your list unsubscribe, Paul? No. Like like (laughs) I had a couple of people, but, you know, I guess they probably weren't going to buy anyway. Exactly. So um, I do that and... You know, what's really funny is when I was in the 80s, I got an email from someone that's like, you're such a scammer, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, 80 some odd churches don't agree with you. So delete. Then I got another email that said, oh, your content's good, but I don't like your delivery. Well, the 6,000 people that that subscribe to me on YouTube disagree. Delete. And. Now I've got 113 members 
and they're paying me, you know, I've grandfathered in some of the old ones. So I've got some that are really cheap, but uh, now instead of the $50 a month price being the aspirational price that I hope someday someone will pay, probably over half of my members are paying me the full $50 a month price. So proud of you, dude. I'm so proud of That's you, man. So awesome. I, it, and it like, it really just chokes me out every time I hear it because like you said something that you may, here's, you made me cry because you recorded me a video and you, and you sent it in. And, um, you know, like you were talking about earlier, how like you were like a freelancer and you were just hustling and a couple months a year, you had some money and a couple months a year, you didn't know what you were doing. And, and, um, mm-hmm. you said something really like profound, like it just made me like totally like collapse. Jocelyn was in there when we were watching your video and I just, uh, you said, uh, you know, I used to worry about being able to have enough money for my family. And now because of my membership, I don't have to worry about that anymore because it is all growth from now, Paul. It's all, you just keep stacking, man. You just keep helping churches. You just keep helping people. And, and like your mission is so important because you're not just teaching people how to use a, 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 an amped up PowerPoint. Like you're helping people deliver the, the message of Christ every well, single and, Sunday. You know, some of those people that you've been training, like they probably have never broadcast anything online. And mm-hmm. think of how many additional people they were able to reach with their services. Think, think how many churches on Easter Sunday, when the whole world was shut down and we couldn't go to church, think how many people just because think how many people just because your membership maybe were able to turn on that presenter one time and reach hundreds of people from that they wouldn't have been able to before. And we will never know the full impact of all that, but I mean, just the thought of it is pretty overwhelming like you're like not only are you taking care of your family but like you're throwing your stone in the pond and your ripple is hitting all those churches and that and that ripple reaches out from that pulpit or that facebook live and hits Mm -hmm. hundreds of people every single week and, and and everybody wins because you decided to start asking (laughs) for the sale you know what i mean and uh Man, right. it's just it's just amazing, and we're just so proud of you. And like, I'm I'm so glad that your wife's a believer now when she sees yeah. the uh, the members coming in. Yep, yep. So uh, you said that, but one of my members, one of my probably in the 70s or 80s uh, members, so you know, just a couple of months ago, um, she joined because her church. Uh, their head tech person was leaving and and she knew that they were leaving at the beginning of March. Bad timing, but this wasn't something she knew then. So uh, she found me and joined up and then COVID-19 hit. And so she's like, Paul, what do I do? What equipment do I need? We need to live stream, blah, blah, blah. So I helped all that because one thing that I didn't mention is I write a monthly live streaming article for a magazine in the church tech niche. So that was a little bit more money that I built up over time. And so I knew all this stuff that I was just waiting for someone to be interested in. And now a lot of people are interested in it. So I helped her and her church was 200 ish members. Now, they haven't started meeting in person again yet because we haven't reopened the country as we're recording this. But she sent me a screen cap of her Facebook Live after the first week. And her 200-ish member church had 1,200 engagements on their video. Wow. So, yeah. That's unbelievable, man. Her pastor's like, I am so glad we authorized you to spend money on equipment. Yeah. This was brilliant. Yeah. And that's a perfect testimonial for you. Like you need to get yeah. her to do a testimonial. Because the you. result you Already deliver did. is the, yeah, yes. yeah, right. Yes. There you go. You, that's you why you're the ask it, baby. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's because like like what because like what your real value proposition is use pro presenter so you can grow your church. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just so you can deliver a speech or, or so it looks pretty when people come in on Sunday. Exactly. Or it's whatever. so you can grow and you can expand and you help people uh, with with their emissions. So, man, mm-hmm. I tell you what, 
if, if anybody's listening to this and you're not freaking inspired, I mean, like you start in 2016, you grind, you hustle, you bake the bricks, you stack the bricks. One of the bricks falls off, you bake another brick you, and you just keep going until you build that momentum and that system. And then all of a sudden you're in, you're not only taking care of your family, but you're impacting other people in the world. And like, you can't do that with anything else, but the membership model, it's not possible. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can make an impact, but the ripple that you can send out by starting and leading a membership community, not only for your family and your family's future and your family tree, but for other people, it's just epic, Paul. And and I just know that this is not going to stop here. I, I can, I already see a, a thousand members in the future. Like it's going to happen. Like, and you're going to go out and grind it. You're going to go out and do it. And your reach, man, is, is going to go mm-hmm. so far. It's, it's going to be like, incredible. So t- tell me this. What are you planning to do next? How are you going to get to 200 members? Like, what is your next big thing um, that you're thinking? Or is there anything, any place you're stuck right now that we can help you take that next step? Well, um, so one thing that I'm doing is I've got a free Facebook group um, that actually the company that created the software, they reached out to me in October and they said, you've got a Facebook group that has like 9,000 members. Uh, should we partner with you to uh, expand this? And, you know, then it can be a Facebook presence for us. And I said, uh, yes. And now, as of today, we're at 19,167 members. In the Facebook group? Facebook group, yes. Bro, you got to put all your, any email you write, you need to paste it in that group too. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So, I, I'm I'm doing like uh, Facebook lives. I'm yes. doing uh, advertising to webinars because when they sign up to the Zoom, I've got their email address. So I'm doing that. Uh, I created the lead magnet at Flip Your Life Live that I've been kind of putting off doing because, you know, it might not work. Well, it turns <laughs> out it worked better than all my other lead magnets. <laughs> so it's funny how that that. Right, you so had to be, there was a session and then you took action and then it worked really good. That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing when you yeah, take action, yeah. isn't it? So, so I have one more thing. I just want to know, you know, if there's somebody out there who's listening to this and maybe they've tried things, maybe they've also been at it since 2016. They've made a little bit of progress, but it's just not catching on. Like, what would you say to that person? Well, I'd say, uh, first off, there's probably just some little thing that you're missing. And so you just need to find that. Don't give up. If people will pay you money, there are more people. And we have the internet. So surely out of the billions and billions of people on the internet, you can find a couple hundred that will pay you for your stuff. And you're worth that. You know, the Bible says, uh, actually, St. Paul said it, and so did Jesus, so it must be good uh, that the worker is worth his wages. It's not wrong to make money, right? It's wrong to steal money. It's wrong to take advantage of people. But if someone has a problem and you can help them solve that problem in less time than they could do it themselves, you should get a little money for that. And then you could take that as a seed and just build on it and find the thing that you're missing. Maybe you are someone that just guesses if people want something or not. And if they don't, you don't even ask. Maybe you need to ask. And if they say no, they say no. And you go, hey, no big deal. Maybe it's uh, that you need to add a live component. Uh, Someone else was offering a live version of these pro presenter classes. And I'm like, they're doing that live. I've already got all the information. I'm going to do it live. And so I've gone through all that. I'm on my second go around. So I added something else to my membership to make it more valuable. And really what I was missing was the marketing piece. And so for me, membership masters was the way to go. And maybe that's what you need too. Maybe it's not, maybe it's something else, but just keep trying. Don't give up. You're, if you're making money, even a little bit, you're probably on the right track. You just need to tweak something to get to where now my membership makes more money than I have ever made 
before. I have a spreadsheet. It's telling me that I am making more money than I have ever made per year in any other job. And I'm not a millionaire, but I'm, you know, it's a decent middle income. So, but you flipped your life. You're living that right. flipped lifestyle, baby. You ain't got to be a millionaire to live the flipped lifestyle. You got to take care of your family. You got to have that co- that contentment and that comfort. Time and, freedom. And time freedom. And you've got all that, man. So listen, yeah. dude, I appreciate your story. I'm so glad that you came on the show. I'm so, I, I cannot ex- fully express how excited I am that you've got 100 members. And Paul, I really do believe that you're on onto something really big here. And, um, you know, we, we just really appreciate you for coming on and sharing and uh, just being so vulnerable and transparent and uh, maybe preaching a little word today, man. So thank you so much, Paul, for being on the show. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad to have come on. Wow. What an amazing conversation uh, with Paul Clifford. Guys, I cannot tell you how hard Paul has worked. We have watched him from day one in his journey and to see him climb that hundred member mountaintop is just absolutely amazing. And, you know, we would love to help you climb your mountain too. Like we, we believe that everybody can launch a membership and get a hundred people to pay them $50 a month, make $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year. If you get 200 members, you've got a six figure business. And we do that in a lot of ways. You can go over to the flip your life community at flip lifestyle. Uh, dot com if you're ready to start, build, and grow your own membership. Or if you want to be like Paul and you really want to pour gas on the fire and you want to take it to the next level, head over to membershipmasters.com and we will help you market and promote your membership every single day. So if you're brand new, head over to fliplifestyle.com. If, you're, uh, get, if you've already got your membership out and you want to get and keep more members, membershipmasters.com newsletter is where you need to be. All right, before we go, we're going to bring back a little segment that we have, haven't done in a while. And uh, I don't know why we stopped doing this. Like, I guess we just got uh, we just the, the podcast kept getting fuller and fuller. But uh, this is a segment that we call Can't Miss Moments. And Can't Miss Moments for us are those things that we get to do because we have a membership site, because we have an online business that we would not have uh, been able to do when we had a nine to five or we were working full time, when we were commuting and going in different directions like ships in the night. Uh, these are things that we've gotten to do because of that. And I, I really w- want to bring this back because of the uh, COVID-19 crisis, the coronavirus pandemic. You know, we are, we like everybody else have been staying healthy at home and uh, quarantining and, uh, and, and social distancing. And, you know, our schools are all canceled and we've been uh, home with our kids now for almost like a month and a half. And that's, that's Which stressful. Great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Let me tell you. But like, it's different, but like uh, my can't miss moment right now is just kind of thankfulness that we are in total control of our lives, that we're living that flip lifestyle. And, you know, even though it was, everything has been disruptive and everything has been hard and everything has been different, um, we've been able to really control our time, change our schedule, have that flexibility to adjust to this in different ways that a lot of people aren't able to do uh, because they're home from work or they have to still go to work and they don't know where their kids are going to be. And it, it, it has just been a total blessing and a, and a real can't miss moment that we've been able to do that. I was talking to Pat Flynn the other day. I was, we were texting back and forth and I was like, man, this is crazy, isn't it? And he said, yeah, but thank God we have an online business. And, um, so that, that's, that's, a, that's our, my can't miss moment is the, that we've been able to spend a lot more time with our kids and control our schedule, um, and, and, and have the flexibility and freedom that we would not have had in a nine to five. And I think the thing that has been really impactful for me during this time is that we've also been able to serve our members better. We've done weekly member calls because we have been here and, you know, we haven't had to run kids everywhere. So that has been a really positive part of being at home for me. And I would say that my can't miss moment is watching movies with the kids. We have watched several movies from my childhood from the 1980s. Y'all been burning up at Disney Plus. I mean, you've been burning up Disney Plus. Well, we've watched, uh, we've watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, we've watched a lot of 80s classics and it's so Pocahontas. funny. Pocahontas. Anna Joe had never yeah, seen we Pocahontas. Did. Um, so we, we've watched a lot of 80s classics and you know, when I, when I tell them what we're going to watch, they're like, Oh, I don't want to, I won't like that. But then I catch them watching it again, like later. (laughs) So, um, it's been fun just showing some of those to the kids. All right, guys, that's all the time that we have for this episode, but like all of our episodes, we want to close our show with a Bible verse. Joss and I get a lot of our inspiration and motivation from the Bible, and we are going to 
fall back to Paul's verse from today. Paul uh, was talking about the Bible verse, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, where he says, the worker is worthy of his wages. And you are worthy of selling stuff online. You have God-given talents and experiences that you can turn into products, put inside of a membership, and go out and make your entire living online. So stop putting it off. Stop waiting for it. If we can help you in any way, let us know. And until next time, get out there, take action, and do whatever it takes to flip your life. Bye. Push the, uh, push the, your, uh, yeah, there you go. And then push the table um, closer to it, like to pin it up against that thing. That's how you do it right there. If you're a podcaster, man, you make it work. All right. I'm going to count myself back in. <laughs> we're about to get taken we're, out. We're going to get taken out by the, this windscreen is going to kill us. Here in a second. All right. We're going to have to take this down. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, this we're about is, to get taken this out. This is like getting ready to crash into my head. Well, we don't want that. No, that wouldn't be the best. Yeah, I mean, if Shane was sitting on that side, he probably wouldn't even notice, right. but, you know. <laughs> it keeps, like, flying in my face. I'm just like, ah.